It is very common these days for us to use VPN, virtual private network tunnels. But if somebody asks us, hey, what exactly does that mean, a tunnel? What would we say? Well, in this video, we're going to demystify what a tunnel is, and that's gonna open the door to a bunch of additional possibilities as we work with networking in general. And to best explain the concept of tunnels, let's start off with a story. Let's imagine we have two houses. We have House 50, which is on Street 1010 in City 1, and we have another city, and it has House 50, but it's on Street 102.0. And let's imagine for the person at this house on the left in City 1 wants to send a package, a box, over to City 2. So the person here would sit down at their kitchen table, get a box, put all the stuff that they want to ship over to that second house at City 2, and they'd put it in the box, they'd seal it, and then they would label that box. In that box, they'd put their own source address, like the return address, and for the destination address, for where we're going to send this package to, they would put the information for the house at City 2. So then they would ship that off via their local carrier. But let's imagine for that package to actually be delivered, the local carrier is going to have to get some help from the jungle transport. So I'll call this uh, the transportation company that's responsible for jungle transportation. And let's also imagine that it has to go from jungle point one to jungle point two. Logically, that's where it has to get to. So if this box makes it to jungle point one, the jungle transport company is going to say, OK, great. Uh, our goal, uh, I see where the original information is, but our goal is to get this from jungle point one to jungle point two. And there could be like lots of other stop points along the way that has to happen, but they're going to forward it based on the source being jungle one and jungle two being the destination. So they use a new box and they simply take the old box with all of its original information and they put it into a bigger box. And that bigger box, the outside label says source is J1, needs to go to J2. And then all these devices and stop points along the way are going to help in forwarding that box over to J2. So the original message is inside in the smaller box and the outside box with the new label is just for that jungle transport. And then someone would have to pick up that package from jungle point two, <laughs> open it up and say, oh, here's the original information. It's coming from this house over here on the left, going to this house on the right. It would throw away the old box because it no longer needs the jungle transport going from left to right. And it would then continue to have that package forwarded until it hit the correct house at city two. So think of that transport across the jungle network as getting a new box with new information as far as the source and destination where it needed to go to get from jungle point one to jungle point two. And so the question may come up, hey, well, that's a great story, Keith, but uh, what the heck does that have to do with tunneling? And the answer is, that's exactly how tunneling works in an IP network. Let me show you. So let's imagine it's PC1 acting as house one. It's on street 10.1.0. That's the network. Its host address is 50, and it has a default gateway of R1. So if PC1 was going to send a packet to PC2, it would forward it, it would get to this router right here. Now, instead of this router, and let's also imagine this is the jungle, instead of this router forwarding it just based on the original source and destination IP addresses, if we have a tunnel set up, and I will put a logical tunnel here in that same jungle color to represent the new box, and if router one has been trained to use the tunnel, it'll take the original message that includes the payload, the layer four header, the layer three source and destination IP addresses like a box and put it into a bigger box. That's what this tunnel represents. It's a new, bigger container that's going to hold the entire original message. But but for the IP addresses, it's going to use jungle point one to jungle point two. Or in this case of these two routers, it would use the source of the tunnel and the destination of the tunnel as those new addresses it's going to use then we'd forward this whole package over the network. So each of these routers in this jungle network here, there might be five or six or eight routers that have to forward it, but they're all forwarding it based on the IP addresses of R1 being the source and R2 being the destination. And then when R2 sees that packet, because it's the end of this tunnel, it would then throw away the outside box because it no longer needs it, and then continue forwarding that packet based on the original source and destination IP addresses. And that would then get to 10.2.0.50. But as it crossed the tunnel, that traffic was placed inside a new box with new IP addresses on the outside label and with the source being R1 and the destination being R2. Now, one great way of reinforcing this concept of having a packet go through and then getting re-encapsulated with a new outside label is to see it in action. So let's look at a protocol capture of traffic going from PC1 to PC2 and we'll look at the traffic before the tunnel, during the tunnel, and then after the tunnel. So this is a packet being sent before it hits R1. So if we look at the layer three information, the source is 101050. That's the IP address of PC1. The destination is 102.0.50, which is PC2. 
And that layer four is using TCP and the payload is HTTP. Now, let's take a look at what happens after R1 receives it, re-encapsulates it, and uses itself as the source address and the destination the other side of the jungle being R2, which is the other end of the tunnel. So once R1 gets the packet and sends it, it's going to put on a new IP header with itself as the source and the destination being R2, the other end of the tunnel. And then that indicates inside this IP header, it indicates that the next protocol is a tunneling protocol, generic routing encapsulation, as opposed to being TCP. And if we look at that GRE header, which has been added, it now points to the next protocol being 800, which is IP version four. So everything from here down these last three rows, think of them like the original box that has then been put into a bigger box. And that bigger box has the labels of the source and end of the tunnel. And then once R2 receives this packet and de-encapsulates it, let's take a look at what that packet looks like now that it no longer has that bigger outside box because it's done going through the tunnel. So this is the packet as seen over on the 10.2 network after R2 has de-encapsulated it and then forwarded it normally on its way. So the source and destination IPs are the original ones inside that IP header. It's now pointing to protocol 6 TCP as the next protocol. So there's the layer 4 header and then there's the final payload. So the takeaway is this. Anytime we have a tunnel, that simply implies that we're taking the traffic and we're putting it into a bigger box. And that bigger box is going to have new labels or new addresses for the transport across the network that's supporting that tunnel. And then once it reaches the other side of the tunnel, the de-encapsulation happens and the packet is forwarded normally. So let's do some reinforcement with some visualization. Let's imagine PC1 is sending an HTTP request to PC2. Well, there's gonna be payload. That's gonna be the HTTP request and TCP header associated with that. And the client is going to include the correct source and destination IP address. So it'll be the source address of PC1 and the destination address of PC2. Once the router gets that, if it has instructions, oh, use the tunnel, it will then include a brand new header. In the case of GRE, it'll be a GRE header. If it's IPsec, it'll be an IPsec header. In either case, it'll be a layer four header. So at the beginning of the tunnel, we're gonna take the original package and all the addressing and encapsulate that and put it into a bigger box. So when you think about a layer four encapsulation, think of a bigger box with its own addresses. And so that's what we're gonna add on a new IP header. So for the tunnel, it would be the source IP address of the local end of the tunnel. In our case, it was R1. And the destination address would be R2. And we can think of that like the transport across the jungle in the bigger box. And then when R2 sees that traffic and can say, oh, this IP packet's for me, and it de-encapsulates, oh, it's GRE traffic. Oh, I'm going to strip that away because on the end of the tunnel. And then it can say, oh, here's the destination address I need to send this to and continue forwarding. So anytime you think of tunneling, think of taking the original contents and putting it into a bigger container, a bigger box before shooting it or sending it over a portion of the network. So we'll continue our discussion regarding tunnels and why they're beneficial and also some very creative things that we can do with them, including using IPsec to protect the packets as they're being sent over that logical tunnel. And we'll do that as we continue through these videos. So until then, be well, be happy, and stay safe.